Welcome to the Application Delivery How-To Series. My name is Christian. Today we are going to cover the topic of how to enable malware scanning and sanitization using iCap. Today we are taking a closer look at how to protect from malware or viruses using the AVI platform. Since we do not provide a scanning engine on our controller, we are partnering with VMware partners like OpsWad or integrate with our own VMware NSX Defender solution. Other third-party ICAP servers are supported as well. So before we look at the configuration, let me walk you through the steps that are taken when this feature is enabled. First, every request will be marked if a scan is required or not. And when that happens, it will be paused and a follow-up request is streamed to the ICAP server for validation. In our platform, we support blocking and sanitization mode. In the case an attack vector is found, Within that uploaded document, the blocking mode will report back and Avil will send a default error page. For the sanitization, or often referred to as CDR, the scanner will remove the attack from the file, for instance with moving the macro from an Excel file, and then return the file back to Avi for further processing. Either way, the attack vector has not made it through the, the application. So let's examine how this behavior is configured and what insights the log analytics provide. So here we have our iCAP virtual service. Let's review how iCAP is configured on this one. If we go to the edit page, we see that an iCAP profile is linked. The iCAP profile contains information like a name, like the cloud it's running in, like the pool group where our iCAP servers are configured, the vendor that the iCAP server is provided by. Here it's configured with OpsWord, but we support other iCAP vendors as well, like our VMware NSX Defender or many others. We have a service URL that we uh, configure here and a lot more uh, smaller configuration items that have uh, reasonable defaults for your installation. Now, this only provides iCAP to the system, but how do we um, apply it to the traffic. That's done in our policies, here in our HTTP security policy, where we have a matching rule for account profile edit, because the application that we're running has a profile page where you can upload files, and we want to have them scanned. So we enable ICAP on this specific path, and now we can use our log analytics to actually review what's happening there. And in Avi, we have many, many analytics right there for you to get the best insights and in what's going on. So let's start here at the ICAP analytics, looking at the action. We have three types of actions here. We have blocked, modified, and disabled. Blocked is when the ICAP server found an attack and it couldn't be sanitized, like a virus file, malware file. Then ICAP, you have a modified a file where it was able to sanitize the request, or we have disabled where we send an, or where there, there was a request sent to this specific path, but no upload was done. So the ICAP server didn't have anything to do and therefore it was disabled. So let's review one of those blocked requests. Here, let's review it. We have ICAP error request was blocked by ICAP server and we get the full detail of what was going on. The reason is infected, and if we scroll down, we find that this is actually, uh, it found the ICAP ICAR test file, which we uh, are using in this demo, and you get all the information about the request and response sent to the ICAP server and received from it. And even more, the full headers that were sent and received to even have more ability to uh, troubleshoot in case you needed to. On the actions front, as I said, we have also, let me remove the filter, we have also the sanitized action or modified here in this case, where similarly we can click in, we see that the request got modified and here you get an information that the file was processed and therefore allowed by the ICAP server. So what else do we get in analytics? As I mentioned before, there's lots of uh, 
and lots of analytics to choose from. You get an overview of the latency, how long did it actually take for the ICAP server to respond. Sometimes you can uh, find anomalies here. You get the ICAP response code, HTTP response code that was sent the server IP and violation resolutions and threat names in case they are specifically they are specifically named from the ICAP server. Thanks for watching. Please check out our other exciting videos in our application delivery how-to series.